I am still getting used to this building. And now that I'm listening to it, that is the hum of the fan I'm hearing. That's not the siren, right? right. <laughs> not the panic. I was thinking, what is that sound? Rick tells me that during the summertime, when he comes in here, if he doesn't bother to turn the lights on, sometimes the pews will shift because the temperature changes. And he'll hear a pop, and he'll look around and try and see where it is, and there's nobody there. It's interesting when we start really listening, what it is we start to hear. Many of you may remember at the end of January, there were many of us, about somewhere between 50 and 60, who gathered for a lunch, and we began to have a visioning session. We talked about where it is that God is leading us as a church. What kind of church is God calling us to be? And it was very good for a new pastor to hear from a church like that because that group said, oh, we definitely understand ourselves to be called as a downtown church. Well, that's good news to me because I have to like this building and don't want to move it. So we are called to be a downtown church, and we got that far. But then I began to push. I said, okay, what kind of downtown church? And we didn't come up with that answer. So we created what we have called a season of prayer. And from the end of January, these four months now, we have been praying. Some of you would pick up a hard copy of the prayer guide on your way out, or some of you would read it on Facebook. Some of you would receive it as an email week by week. And we would pray. And if you've been praying this past week, then you will have already noted that the theme of the whole week of prayer was Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Now, sometimes it's very hard to hear God's voice. And one reason is because there is so much other noise going on. That's one reason we build church buildings, to try and have a relatively quiet place that we come to listen. Now, some of you have also discovered that you can hear God's voice in your family and friends. And so yesterday, a good number of you turned out to be a part of the funeral. And as you left, you spoke the word of God to Sharon. You were the very voice of God because God's word is a comforting word in the times of death. And so as you left, you were the word of God. And of course, Sharon is working through grief, but eventually she'll hear that word. And your voice was the very voice of God, speaking God's word of comfort to someone who's experienced death. Some of you go to Sunday school. And during Sunday school, you talk with your friends. I had a professor who said that the best pastoral ministry in the church takes place before Sunday school begins at the coffee pot. Because while you're at the coffee pot, you know, you're fixing your coffee, and somebody else comes beside you, and you say, my kids are driving me crazy. <laughs> and the one who's stirring their coffee says, mine too, and you start to compare notes, and you join, and that's where we hear the voice of God. Amen. And so we hear the voice of God when we're speaking with our family, and we were speaking with our friends. The United Methodist Women invited me to one of their home meetings, one of their circle meetings. And so I went and I was late. And I showed up and I said, swear to goodness, those six women practically accosted me. Because when I came in the door, they said, Catherine, we know that we're supposed to be talking about what kind of church we're supposed to be. And we know we're supposed to be listening to God. But none of us have heard anything from God. And I said, well, okay. That, that's all right. Sometimes God doesn't speak right away. God moves on God's own time. So maybe you haven't heard from God yet. And we all calmed down. And we sat and we had our program and we had our snacks. And then, by George, that group started to talk practicalities. And that group said, you know, so-and-so is now homebound. 
And we've got to check on them, and we also need to check on the caretaker, because taking care of somebody who's homebound is hard work, and they don't get a break. And they said, oh, and there's somebody else over here who's also homebound. We better check on them. You know what? We need to call so-and-so, because they have the time, and maybe they can take so-and-so to the doctor. And they began to work out who was going to be in touch with which homebound of our members, and who was going to touch base with the caretakers to say, we're praying for you. And who was going to send cards? And who was going to drive to the doctor? And I sat there while they did this. And when they finally wound down, I said, OK, ladies, that's the voice of God. Because sometimes the voice of God speaks in our needs. And when we hear of needs, when we hear of needs of school children, when we hear the needs of earthquake victims, when we hear the needs of the bereaved, that's the voice of God speaking to us. Jesus was adamant about that. Even as you do it to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, whether you fed them, gave them a drink, clothed them, welcomed them, visited them, then you've done it to Jesus. That's God's voice. When we are picking up on the needs, when we hear those needs, then we're hearing the voice of God. You know, the reality is, some people are lucky. Some people, like Elijah, get a still small voice. And some people, like Moses, get a voice out of a burning bush. Most of us don't get that. And so we have to listen even more carefully for the voice of God speaking to us. And one of the ways we do this, frankly, is we come together to worship. All right, now, some of you are married, and some of you have been married, and I want to do a very quick poll. In the past mm, three weeks, I'll give you three weeks. In the past three weeks, how many of you have sat and listened to your spouse for 20 minutes without saying a word? I can't raise my hand on that one. <laughs> How many of you have done that? Aha! We have a couple of really good listeners in the crowd. Most of us, not so much. When we start talking with our spouse or when they start talking with us, we're right in there. Some of us are fixers. They explain the problem, we're going to fix that problem for them. Or they start doing that, oh yeah, I had that same problem, and we interrupt. Or they say something really stupid, we say, that is stupid, and that doesn't matter anywhere. <laughs> but very, very few of us are able to keep our mouths shut for 20 minutes to listen to our spouse. And yet here you are, granting me that privilege. What an honor you give me. I'm not even married to you. But you sit there, for the most part, for 15 to 20 minutes, not saying a word, listening to what I say. The thing is, it's not because you particularly have an overpowering affection for Catherine. You love me, I get that, I appreciate that. But the reason that you listen as closely as you do, that you don't even do for your spouse, is because we have an understanding in the church that when the scripture is read, and then the scripture is preached that we are hearing the word of God. Jesus said earlier in that 10th chapter that we are the sheep and we hear the shepherd's voice. And some of us have been struggling since the end of January saying, I'm not hearing anything. And my guess is actually you are. Actually, you have been hearing the voice of the shepherd. You just didn't know that voice. Oh, that was God? You don't listen to Catherine because Catherine has any special deal. You listen to the pastor because the pastor is struggling to bring the scripture into the 21st century and say, this is the word of God to the people of God. And when you listen with those ears, no matter who's up here, then that's the voice of the shepherd. Now, those of you who've been members of a church for a long time are well aware 
that pastors have dry spells in terms of the sermon. But for those of you who are loyal members of the church, you have long since learned that even if you don't get something out of the sermon, that the worship service consists of a lot more than just the sermon. Amen. And so some of you come, and when we pray, you hear the voice of God in prayer. And some of you, when we stand up to sing, you hear the voice of God in singing the hymns, which, by the way, is why some of you get so uptight when we choose hymns that you don't know. <laughs> because you're thinking, I can't hear the voice of God if I don't know what it is I'm singing. And the gift that you give the choir week after week after week is that you sit there and you listen. And sometimes that music is a gift and it's the very voice of God speaking to us. Sometimes when you listen to the choir, that's the voice of the shepherd. And we're the sheep who hear that voice. The Sunday after Easter, I was shaking hands at the back, and Monday morning, I tend to think through that, Monday morning I thought, I didn't see Jean Peel. I knew she was going to be gone on Easter, but I thought she was going to be back. I didn't see Jean Peel, and I worried about that for a little while, and so on Tuesday, I picked up the phone and called her, I said, Jean, did I miss you at church? She said, oh no, you didn't miss me. She said, I sat in my pew until the organ post loop was finished. And I just missed you. You know, for those of us who do hear the voice of God in music, we may be wasting some of our listening time. Now, occasionally, Susan may play an organ prelude that we can't talk anyway. <laughs> but what are we missing if we aren't listening to the music all the way through? Jean was listening for the voice of God because sometimes the voice of God speaks through the organ or through the piano. And I tell you what, we're going to try a little experiment this Sunday. Just the greetings. After the benediction, after we sing Lift High the Cross, then why don't you sit down? Now, okay, some of you I know have to dash off to the cafeteria to get there before the Baptists. Okay. And some of you, your dinner will burn your crisps if you don't get out of here spot on noon. All right, but the rest of us might want to sit and listen to the music, not because Susan is a wonderful organist and it's some sort of concert, but because she has selected something so that we can listen through the music for the voice of the shepherd. Some of us have been so worried these past months. I haven't heard anything from God. Maybe you have and you just didn't know it. But those of us who are the people of faith, those of us who are the members of the church, those of us who are the body of Christ, Jesus says we will know his voice. The meeting that's happening downstairs today at noon is an attempt to say this is what we have heard. And I hope that you have listened to your United Methodist women's groups and your Sunday school classes. That you have heard through your family members who've had serious conversation. I hope that you have heard it in scripture and in sermons. I hope that you have heard it in prayer and in anthem and in instrumental music. The voice of God, the voice of the Good Shepherd, has talked to each of us. We are the sheep. We know that voice. And so it is.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.